Hey guys, so how many of you, show of hands, grew loofah along with me this year? Okay, show of hands doesn't work. Down in the comments, let me know if you grew loofah and you, know, you wanna know how to take your loofah gourd that's hanging on your plant and make it into one of these handy dandy little scrubbers. Because that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna harvest our loofahs and I'm gonna show you how to turn them into these very useful things that I used to think grew in the ocean. These look exactly like sea sponges to me. How about you? Did you know that they came from a plant out here on dry land? So this year I actually planted four loofah plants uh, on one TP. However, I got a bonus right here from last year. This one came up volunteer way back there in the ground where obviously a seed blew. And, uh, but I've got quite a few loofahs on this one that are ready. But first of all, let's go take a look at the one I actually planted on the teepees. So this loofah, these four loofah plants actually didn't feel that the teepee was enough. They are now growing along this light string toward you. They're growing back toward the fence, across the fence, and back up the light string over there. And they ended up taking over one of my orange trees. So you can see I have loofahs hanging all over the orange tree. And I'm totally okay with that. These plants are beautiful. They are ending the end of their, coming to the end of their life now, so they're not quite as beautiful as they were a month or so ago, but they're still covered in flowers. And I'm telling you, of everything in the garden, I think bees are more attracted to loofah flowers than almost anything else. I've seen three to four bees fighting over one loofah flower. So I'm gonna show you today how to pick a loofah when it's ripe to pick because there is an underripe stage and an overripe stage. The underripe stage would be completely green, completely firm. That has not, that is not finished uh, developing the loofah inside and it's not going to produce a sponge if you cut it right now. It's going to be kind of a, just a mess inside and not have the structural integrity that a dry loofah needs to have. Now this one right here is really getting to the point we want it to be at. It's the yellow color, but it's got brown on the tips and kind of through the middle, kind of like an overripe banana. Um, but one thing you're gonna feel is if you squeeze it, you're gonna feel and hear cracking. You actually might even feel some air blow out on you. I just felt that as well. Um, it, there's some separation between the skin and the loofah itself inside. This is the next stage. Now this one is starting to get a little bit over. Once it starts to get like this, um, it's okay because there's no black on it and it's not dry. You can still feel some wetness to it inside. When you get to this stage and it's completely dry and cracky, what you're gonna find a lot of the time is that when you peel it open, the fiber inside has started to mold and maybe go black a little bit. So that's not gonna be good. This is too soon. We're gonna, we're gonna harvest these two right now. Now where these hook on to the actual plant, it's very hard to pull them off. So you are gonna need some clippers. And just snip the stem just above the fruit. And so we've got these two. Now here's the cool thing about loofah. You will never have to buy loofah seeds again because inside this fruit are a million loofah seeds, just in one. And they have a little thing down here where when it's naturally hanging, the bottom, as it dries, it pops off just like that and all of the dried seeds spill out onto the ground. So unless you want a million loofah plants in one spot, pick this before that happens. Now, when it gets dry, that's when the seeds come loose from the inside. And you can see, I've got a ton of loofahs that just come out like a pepper shaker. Okay, so let's peel this and see what we've got inside. So we can start, there's already a seed coming out. Um, right at the bottom, put your finger inside and just pull up and you're gonna just kind of slide your finger along, make it like a zipper, and then you're just gonna take off its jacket. And look what we've got inside there. It's that easy. Now again, there are a bunch of seeds inside there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Now these seeds, a few of them will come out right now, but they're gonna come out a lot better once it's dried. So once you have these peeled, just sit them out in the sun for a day or two until they're crispy. You know, they feel like a loofah sponge. And then you just have to bang on it, get all the seeds out, 
And then you can cut them into shape. You can leave it like this, um, or you can cut them into smaller shapes, you know, if you want to use for dishes or, you know, leave it like this to do your back. But um, once they're dried out, just take them in the house or wherever you have a sink, run some water over them with some soap, just wash them really good, get some of that slime off that uh, is natural around this gourd, and you're done. You can store them just in a dry place. Um, they're great to give as gifts. People love these because they have no idea, again, where they came from. And you can say, I grew these. Give them some seeds with it. That'd be a great idea. Okay, let's try this one now. Bottom comes off real easily. Yeah, that's easy too. So you can see that when it is less brown, the loofah sticks to the skin a little bit, but it's still intact. Uh, if it was like this, the whole thing would stick to the skin. You'd just be peeling it off in chunks like a cucumber with, that was really dry inside. Now, if you didn't get a chance to grow this year, I do have a video I will link down below that shows it's not time to plant them right now unless you're in the southern hemisphere. Then it's the perfect time to plant them because loofah do take a long time to develop. And so you want to plant them, especially if you're in a cooler uh, climate, you want to probably start them indoors, maybe in March, and have them ready to go once all frost is passed. You can set them out and they'll have all summer to grow and produce. They do need about seven months from putting them in the ground until you can get some mature um, gourds. Now I've got baby ones still coming on that they won't, they won't make it before the cold weather gets here, even here in our warm climate. And so I am actually just going to chop those off, the ones that are maybe this long. I'm going to chop them off. I'm chopping off the ends of the vines so they can put their energy into ripening the big ones that I've got on here already. And then I'm done for the year. And as much as I love this plant, I need to get it out of here because fall crops need to go in. So I hope you grew these along with me this year. If you did, let me know below. If not, let me know that you're going to grow them next year because I do think this is one of the most fun things that I've ever grown. I will always grow them for the beauty of the plant and just the, the novelty of it when people come over, which didn't get any visitors this year, except for thousands of you, um, but they had no idea what this was. So they're fun to grow. They're useful. In fact, you can eat them when they're real small. I don't particularly like them, but other people do. Uh, so they're edible. They're useful. What more could you want?